All right, guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. Today, we're talking about the SDS2 Summit, not the SDS2 uh, Conference. It is the renamed to the summit. It was held in Tampa Bay during a red tide. And was that a good predictor of how it would go? We'll let you know this time on the Steel Forum. So we're way behind on this one, as we are in everything. Uh, but we went to the SDS2 forum in kind of Tampa? Or Summit. 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 Yeah, they, they changed the name for reasons, right? And maybe it's because they expected fewer people. I don't I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's it's maybe that's why they don't call it Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. It's just KFC. Is that actually true? Yeah. I I don't think that's true. I feel like that would come up on Snopes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna edit it in. Like you're, right, you're gonna fact check me on that. Yep. Right here, I'm gonna okay. put the little Snopes article. Well, you know what? Then I'm gonna go ahead and quote comedian Chris Porter a little bit here. Um, Taco Bell is not food. And it's called fourth meal for legal reasons. Food product, like cheese product used to it's, be in the... It's delicious, but it's not food. And they've never said it was food. That's why they call it fourth meal. I don't know what they put in it that makes it so addictive. Heroin. But when when the mood strikes for Taco Bell, it's not for any... It's not for Mexican food, because it's certainly oh, yeah. not Mexican food. No. It's, no, taco. it's taco. I want Taco Bell. Taco Bell mm-hmm. Right. But with the, even when they add more products, they added those, you know, Doritos, taco, whatever they call them, taco crazy. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah. Look. <laughs> and it still had that same that. addictive, but not actually good taste. I don't understand it. Right. It is mm-hmm. satisfying, but <laughs> kind of to your point, not like other food is. Right. That is the only restaurant that my wife and I will go out of our way to go get. So there is no Taco Bell in the town that I live in. The nearest Taco Bells are a half hour away in any other direction. Okay. We will leave town to go get Taco Bell. And that'll be a dedicated trip. It's not like we're on our way to something else and it's there. It's like, hey, you want to dedicate an hour of driving round trip to go get Taco Bell? And yeah. sit in their parking lot and eat it. Yeah, yeah let's go. You know, I, lunch break. That's an hour. We can make it fit. Let's let's do this. And if we're traveling, we'll pass by all kinds of other restaurants. You know, it because we'll eat at chain restaurants. So we'll eat at Olive Garden, Applebee's, and all that kind of stuff. But it's if we're out and like, you know, there's no other reason for it. It's just hey, we're out and about and we're hungry. Let's find something. We know what it is. We're gonna go there. But we're out traveling, and it's like, hey, they've got a Taco Bell here. Let's go stop and get something. We can't skip it. Yeah. It kills us. Yeah. it's it's, There's something about it. Hey, they sell heroin there. Let's go. And I'll trick myself, right? (laughs) Like, if there's, like, a chore that I have to do, like, I've got to go pick up the kids from this stupid thing, I'll be Uh like, you know what? Taco Bell. So I'm excited about it. It, it, Yeah. yeah, It's it's like a reward. A reward. I'm curious. This is a poll, right? Instant poll. If you're if you're watching this video right now, you need to respond. Are you on TikTok, right? Because I don't think there's any detailers on TikTok, but I am addicted. I'm I'm not on TikTok. Oh man, it's it's dangerous, and it's weird too because there are good days and there are bad days. Like there are days, and, and I'm not talking about a bones no bones day thing. This is different, but it, it's a thing. It's a TikTok thing. I, you know, it, it sounds familiar because my wife. Yeah looks at it a little bit and she said something something about a pug falling over or something like that that's exactly uh, that's what it is right so if you don't know what the bones no bones thing is and i'm just on the outside of it i've just seen enough that i i I understand what it is this this dog has like fibromyalgia or i don't know plantar fast some damn thing that some days he can stand up and walk around and other days he can't 
and it's a bones day versus a no bones day. So in the morning, he puts a video on and he says, it's a, if it's a bones day, the dog can walk or not. And that's supposed to determine. I mean, it's as reliable as, as astrology is, right? Like somehow the <laughs> sure. month that you were born in determines your whole life's path somehow. Sure. I'm like yeah, every other reason. person that was born in September for reasons. Uh, okay. Sounds great. But uh, now I don't remember what we were talking about. We wanted to talk about the, the SDS forum. Oh, yeah. uh, conference. Uh, no, summit. 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 Damn it. Yes. It's a summit. Summit. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's certainly different than past years. This one was uh, in Florida. Uh, not the good part of Florida. I, there, I'm told there are good parts of Florida. I've been there. It's, you know, there, there's nice, but this, this well, wasn't They've that. all got Mickey Mouse ears around them. Um, it, it turned out, it, frankly, and there's no nice way to say this, the hotel was a dump. It, it just was. It was, it was a bit rough. But, the, you know, they the location, owned that. They admitted it. Yeah, it was yeah. Like there was and a cover-up, but they're like, wow, they the apologized, world. too. They're like, we're sorry. This... Right, we're sorry. We didn't know, right? Whoops. If you look at yeah. the hotel, if you look at the website, it looks great, right? Right. So maybe next time they'll visit, but it literally rained in our room. We had to <laughs> yeah. change rooms because we were sitting in there waiting, you know, between uh, summit <laughs> sessions, between sessions. sessions, and we just hear this threat, threat behind us and we just turn around it's just raining in my onto my bed right. well it, you know what was fun about that is we're so we started out on the fifth floor right? right so we're on the fifth floor we've got water coming in you know what that means especially dripping from above that means that there's a leak on the sixth floor so the solution of course is put us up on the seventh floor same spot but now we're above the leaking water worked for me it's like hey that's problem solved so we got the exact same view, but now at a better elevation. So, hey, it worked out for us. Yeah. Pros, cons, right? Pro, it wasn't in Nebraska, right? So flights are cheaper, easier to get there. Right. It was on the beach, which is fantastic. There was a tiki yeah. bar, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. All that stuff was to the good, right? So right direction, right? Yep. This, and an outdoor pool and, and right. hot tub that people actually it use. It was of resort, right? <laughs> yes. It, at least hypothetically. Yes. Right. This one was a misstep. I don't think they necessarily made any decision that I wouldn't have made in the same exact circumstances. Right. Right. They probably learned from it and said, okay, we have to actually go physically scout it. Just physically scout it. Right. We've got to send yeah. some people there, make sure that it's actually okay. Uh, and that's not even to talk about the uh, sex trafficking in the tiki bar that we, <laughs> yeah, we particularly ran into. That. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first night was we're, a whole and, incident. And this is the best part of, of the, the summit is the the networking, right? Like the, the before again, party. Like we talked in the other video, chatting with other people who go through the same stuff every day as you do, suffer the same frustrations. And it's you don't even try to talk about work when you're at the bar, right? Or sh or it just comes up, right? Because you have things in common with these people. So you get to share right. those frustrations. That's what you're going to gravitate towards. Right. It's very exciting. Um, but and they're so all we'll... horror stories too. Yeah. Nobody tells you how great and smooth that wastewater treatment plant we just did went. It's all just, here's all the bullshit that went down since the last year we got together yeah. and talked. Here, let, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you about my misery. Let's live yep. it together. And then eight you hours can tell me your story of misery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, Let's see who who has the the best misery in the end, yeah. and yeah. that's that should be our our channel's name is is whose misery is best. <laughs> it shouldn't be Steel Forum, but right. that's that's the the detailer thing. But yeah, so we're you know we're we're there the first night, and we're kind of out of the corner of my eye. No, actually, what happened is you know a couple of the guys were like you know hey, hey you know look at those girls over there. Those are those girls are way too hot to be hanging out with a bunch of middle-aged detailers, right? Like, and it, that, that was absolutely true, right? Like they were working gay and it turned into this whole thing. They, you know, they're, I, I, I just have to use the word pimp. I don't know if there's another way to describe this, this guy, but pimp, right. Was upset. Cause in the end, 
the, the guy that, that, that these girls were working on didn't understand that these are sex workers, right? They're not sitting with you to enjoy your company. They want some money, right? Even to just sit with you, right? Like it, it's, yeah, it's a loss leader. They're hoping to take you away and, you know, earn more money. But either way, they spent the night with you. They expect some, some money. And long story short, security, police, we're wandering around. You're standing behind me. We're facing off with a pimp, <laughs> right, to try to get this girl who no longer wants to be associated with a pimp because she didn't get the money away. That's the whole, and it, it, it turned out. Never in my life have I felt more like a, a character out of a Bond movie. You're familiar with Odd Job? Yes, and you fit, so, the, you fit the role. Right. So for those who don't know me outside of this little camera frame, I am a five foot four fat guy who's also a power lifter. Okay. I look like a baby gorilla, 100%. And so Nick is about to go confront somebody or protect somebody from being confronted by a potentially violent person. And he just looks to me and says, stand behind me and look threatening. <laughs> and I have just walked into this situation. I am not sure quite what is going on. I'm try I'm overhearing conversations going on all around me, trying to piece this together. So I'm just walking behind him, just arms crossed and looking pissed off. And dude walks away. Guy, guy sees me standing there and it's like, well, it's two on one. And that guy looks like he's probably someone to keep an eye on. I'm out of here. And he just right. leaves. Right. And it, it's kind of <laughs> like, what I was what counting on. Happening? Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. For. Uh, yeah. I, I told my wife this story when I got home and I was like, the end of the story is us standing up against a pimp. Right. And, and having to separate a prostitute from her pimp so that she can be while safe. the cops are on their way. Right. Yeah. And that sounds like a, that's a ridiculous ending, right? No point from me sitting at bar and having friends with, or having chat with my friends at a conference, would I agree to go and do that? That is not a thing I want. I don't seek those things. Each step was reasonable in this path yep. <laughs> and we ended up at that ridiculous point because you have to do each small right thing and then you end up right. in this spot and, but that yeah, it was a series of right decisions that led to the, right. the showdown you in a situation like, that you would never happening? choose right to but that shit just happens to me i I don't know how. Sometime I will tell you. Yeah, I don't you, need to hang out with you in person. Right. Though, I'll tell you the story of myself giving a coked out piggyback ride to a stripper <laughs> in Canada uh, and getting free donuts. That's a, it's a good story, too. I don't have um, these adventures, and I'm glad. And I don't chew for them. I don't, I have a pretty mundane guy. Right, like I'm pretty white bread. I don't know how I end up in these situations, but I most certainly do. It's it, it, it's a good story. But anyway, so to the the meat and potatoes of the summit, the and I always feel a little bit bad, right, when I when I rag on the keynote, but I I always seem to rag a little bit on the keynote. This one in particular was marine biologists. Something to do with an aquarium. Yeah, yeah, from, I think, so. I think the clear now, water. To be fair, we walked be in fair. because we were dealing with our reigning room. We walked in during the last five minutes of that conversation. Well, right, because I, I'm i not interested in marine biology. Sure. Right, I'm a, I'm a detail. Like, we had to move rooms. We, like, we, we couldn't have been there if we wanted to. We just didn't have the opportunity. That's true. That is true. But there have been keynotes that have been profoundly interesting and pertinent to our craft. Uh, I remember my, my favorite keynote, and I, I wish I got more information at the time, but it was an attorney that got up and spoke about making your contracts work for you and how to, how to write a contract, how to protect your payment, how to protect yourself. 
Great. fantastic content. I wish I could have recorded it at the time. I thought it was going to be available by PowerPoint. I tried to get the person's information. Uh, I misplaced it or, or whatever, but uh, you know, it was great to listen what, to and I wish I'd gotten it. There's, I think the word keynote actually has meaning in this context, right? The keynote is supposed to be the thing that sets you up. This is setting the message for the rest of this conference. Right. This is how this conference is going to be go. This is the level of conversation that you can expect. And I, I don't know. It just doesn't, it can be interesting, right? But I've got YouTube. If I, if I want to learn about the aquarium or something, I'll, I'll just go on YouTube. I'll watch yeah. that. Uh, I feel like it should be relevant to the industry, right? Or relevant at least to the people in the room, maybe not industry specific, right? But here's how to be a more productive person in general. Here's right. how to be happy. Here's how, you know, something like that. This was, it, it was, yeah, it was I a mean, little bit. It, to my mind, it, what I would be shooting for would be something more along the lines of having uh, a detailer, a fabricator, and a rector get up and do some sort of a case study discussion of a project and what went well, what fell apart, and how it could be avoided in the future. Something to that effect. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because you're there to learn. So, an yeah. honest white paper that sets study. Up, yes. Having something that sets you up for, you know, primes you for, all right, you're going to be learning some great stuff. Here's a taste. Here's a sampling. Here's something to be thinking about as you're approaching these, you know, uh, hey, what what would you learn out of this that could have helped this situation where I had to detail this thing a million times and well, or, or model it? Well, you know what? I probably should have learned parametrics. Oh, hey, there's a session on parametrics. That would have been a great thing to know, right. or right. something to that effect. Something that ties it all in. Yeah. So, I don't. Know. I think one of the things, the thing that we're all there for, right? The I guess the the meat and potatoes is what's coming up in SDS two, right? What's new? What's set the tone? I really feel like that should be the keynote, right? Here's yeah. what SDS is doing. Here's the future. Here's what we expect. Here's what we think. And then we have time throughout the rest of the conference to kind of reflect on that. Say, okay, based on that, uh, here are the things that I want to know. But, and this takes me to my second point. What used to happen is we used to get a release and then the conference would hit. Right. And we could talk about what happened in that release right? Here are the things that we saw. Here's what we liked. Here's what we didn't like. Now that that's been a little bit flipped where the release comes after the conference. Right. And they're the whole time they're talking about features that are going to exist, the stuff that's going to happen. And it's, it sounds great, but I, until I try to use it, I can't tell you if it's any good. Right. I don't know. Right. Right. It sounds good. Well, the, the, and this wasn't part of the keynote, but one of the things they did, and it was really towards the end, I think, of the whole uh, conference, was discussing how they have revamped their internal systems and mm -hmm. how they're bringing more users. I, I hate that they use the term stakeholders. That doesn't mean anything to me. To me, a stakeholder is a shareholder, and I don't care about the shareholders right. of SDS if it's a well, public. In the software industry, is. buzz terms are like crack. Right. Just right. like, and, and the other one we heard constantly was the scrum process, right? Scrum process. Two years Which from now, that scrum process will be, know you know, like uh, Six Sigma was, you know, it's ISO 9000, whatever, right? All, right. all buzz right. stuff. The, the phrase, the, the, the specific phraseology that they're using, I don't so much care about, but to find out that they are bringing in detailers mm -hmm. and fabricators mm -hmm. and just generally any, any users of the software and they're asking them, Hey, we've got this idea. Cause this has always been a headache of mine is they get an idea. Somebody tells them, I want this feature. And then a programmer designs the feature right. with no further input from a detailer, from the user. 
And so you get something where it's like, well, okay, I, I think your X and your Y are different than the way I would consider this. You have rows and columns backwards from how I yeah. think or yeah. whatever it is, you know, it, and, and it's just, it's not what a, a regular user would work, but having a programming background, I understand how they arrived at these, these final features. And it's like, you didn't bring the right people in at the right time. And now you've got people that are angry about it. And they're yelling at you to fix it as opposed to praising you for having gotten everything right pretty much the first try. And by bringing in these people along the way and using different detailers along the way, don't just get one person's perspective. Let's get more along the lines of a standard. What do all of you have in common? What are you all saying that we need? That's how it needs to work. And I think that is going to really produce a much better product in the end. And I'm really excited to see what the end result is of that. Cause I mean, we've workshop things internally before I could come up with something. And then to me, this works great. And yeah. then I'll show it to uh, our accounting person and one of the detailers and they've both got different ideas and we start to talk and we'll, we'll bring this into a, a, a finer point Say, so, okay, it needs to have these features. All right, this thing that I thought I needed, I don't really, as it turns out, we can do it. It happened some other today way. on something as simple as a timesheet. Timesheet, yes. Right? And that's where I was going with it is once I've got it there, then I bring it to everybody and there's a little more conversation. And it's like, okay, these are the final things that we need to take care of. But I've met most of the requirements before I've even brought it to the general public to consume. Right. And, and and that's what they're doing now. And that's what I'm liking about how they've, they've set this new process up. And that's right. the that's short, exciting. my short understanding of what they call the scrum process, which they're pretty passionate about, especially Adi uh, is they start, they, they get the specs, right? This is what we want to happen. They try it. They put it in two weeks later, they go back and they take it to a team, right? On that team is a detailer. And they say, hey, this is what we've got. What do you think? And then right from there, it gets either, nope, you, you didn't meet the requirements, or yes, you did. The, the success or failure of this process, though, is going to be really, really dependent on those the quality of those stakeholders, right? right. Are they people who are going to push back or and, and who understand interface design or understand... Or are they people who are, you know, they, they're kind of like, oh, it works, right? I can right. do it that way. Right. You want somebody with some discerning taste. Right. Actually. Right. And somebody who's not going to put up with any any bullshit. I, I expect it to work perfectly. Good enough right. is not good enough. I, right. Right. No extra mouse clicks, no extra dialogues, which is a focus. It's something that they've been working on. And I, I like it, right? Like they're looking, they're, they're taking out clicks to get things done. And I love that. Right. That's a, and they're, they're actively looking for that. Like they even showed a bunch of different studies that they have done on how does a veteran user versus a new user, they're tracking mouse clicks. They're tracking how long it takes to get through to navigating something. And they're making sure that this not only improves for a, a veteran user, but it improves for a novice user. And you can see the difference between the veteran and the novice user, because you've also got to worry about, and this comes up a lot too, whenever they make a big change, is you get the veterans who are just opposed to change. Like they want yeah. new things, but then they yep. don't want the new things to, to not be the way they think it should work. Right. And so they, they don't want to struggle with anything. They just want it to all just happen. But then you've got the newer users that don't come in with any preconceived notions. And they're like, why would you do it this way? This is stupid. And then the, the veterans give that great old answer. This is the way we've always done it. Right. I'm super used to this. That doesn't make yeah. it good. Does it make it better? Yeah. It makes, it makes you better at doing it because you know how to do the stupid thing. But if we would just do it smart, I could just pick this up instantly. It's just intuitive. Like yeah. I have a remote for my TV now. Do you remember remotes for TVs from like the 80s and 90s? Yes, there you, this, oh, I'm with you 100%. Buttons. I'm with you because you used to be able to hold a remote and I have never held this remote before. I do not have to look down at this remote. 
I know how to change the channel. I know how to change the volume. The power button is up here in the top right corner. The volume and channel rockers are down here. And you don't use any of the other buttons, right? Right, right. For, well, for your cable remote, there was a guide yeah. button and arrows to go yes. around. And you'd press OK, yeah. right? Yeah, but you had a billion buttons that Hold you on. didn't even use. Now, we'll be right back after this short word from our sponsor. On the opposite, I got a, just just a brand right, new, yeah. yeah, brand new thing, right? There are no buttons on this remote, right? Which is sounds great, right? Simplified interface, except it takes me thirty five presses of this stupid remote to get to what I want, right? Like yep. I I want HDMI one. That's all I I want uh, HDMI one and Netflix. Why the hell? This button, this doesn't even, if you've got a Samsung, somebody tell me what the hell that button, I've even Googled it with the three things and the color. <laughs> what the hell does that thing do? I have no idea what that button does. I, I thought, oh, cool. They made a, a button that you can program. You can tell it what to do. No, you can't. It does nothing. Yep. It's on I, every I, Samsung I've got remote that same here. remote. That's why you're looking, you're, you're showing me that. And I was like, yep, that's, you beat me to it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> what does the button do? Oh, super frustrating. But it it does go to uh, the Samsung monitors are great. The remotes suck, but it's not Samsung. All of my remotes suck. They're terrible. <sighs> Usa. Right. But if a kid picks that up with no instruction at all. They figure that thing out on their own in seconds. Yeah. Somehow it is intuitive, but we grew up with basically a tablet of physical push buttons mm -hmm. and we knew which buttons were the important ones. And yeah, like you said, you could find it without looking. I could find it in the dark. I know where all the buttons are. I, I got my new phone. Okay. Note 20. Love it. Great phone. There's no power button on the freaking thing. There's there's a second button, right? There's the volume rocker, which everybody knows. And then there's a second button, which everybody knows what that next button does. It turns the damn phone off, right? And at first, I was pissed. I was like, why is there no power button on this phone? But then I thought about it. I don't ever turn the fucking phone off. Right. Right. You turn what the screen off. Right. Why would I want a dedicated button to turn this phone off? That's stupid. I don't need it. Right. And a modern phone doesn't turn off. Right. Even if you turn it off, it's not off. The only way to actually turn it off is to pull the battery, and now they're all sealed. You can't pull the battery. Right. So unless you run die. it dead, yeah, you have to completely run it to death to kill it and to actually shut it off. Yeah. That thing's still tracking you. It's still right. listening to you. It's still doing all the things. Yep. Don't. It just pretends to be asleep. It's just laying there with its eyes shut, still listening. Yep. yep. Like I do from time to time when my wife is around. But she, like, my wife is one of the people that I think of when I feel terrible for people like Adi and all of those interface designers who have to deal with people with no intuitive ability to use computer programs at all. Right? Nothing. Right? I get into a computer program and I'm like, all right, I should probably do this to make this happen. My wife will just stare at me. I don't know how to do it. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> Try what? Just clicking on things? Yes, precisely. Which of those menu items sounds close to what you want to do? <laughs> just go up there and look. And if you can't, press the help button. Another thing, I, that was one of the sessions, get, to get back on topic, there was there was actually a session about the help file, right? And nobody's sitting there. And I was like, I will sit here and I will give you a hard time about everything. <laughs> and this was <laughs> this was the classic situation, right? Of, hey, this doesn't work. Oh, well, next time. This doesn't work. Oh, but we're fixing it. Oh, but this doesn't work. You should, you should do this. Oh, we already did. It'll be in the next version. And I'm like, I, I want to believe you. <laughs> right right but you're you're asking me for suggestions i'm giving you but you're telling me that this stuff has all been done already 
It's already done. But I feel like freaking Charlie Brown with the football. And, <laughs> well, yeah, and that was the question, too, is well, what's keeping you guys from just jumping into the oh, new version? That, that session. Well, I somebody told me the stove was hot, and I went over and touched it anyway, and I got burned. I don't touch and then that anymore. happened four more times over the past several years. And now you're telling me, why won't you go touch the stove? I, I swear I fixed it. I've been burned. Well, it, it's not that I refuse outright. It's just, I've been burned. It's hard to get over that. And that was the title of the session too. I think it was right. What's keeping you from upgrading. And yeah. we didn't know that that was going to be the end of the presentation. They just basically, Stop the presentation. Said, no, seriously, guys, what is it? Why aren't you upgrading? Right. And I feel bad, right? Because somehow I end up being the bad guy because I'm the only guy who's willing to speak up. Right. right. And, and just be honest. Right. Because everybody, 12 rows of eight people, are all thinking the same thing. We brought a project in to a new version and we got fucked. Something went bad and it cost me time. It cost me money. It cost me misery. Mm -hmm. And so I don't do that anymore. Right. And their, their point is valid, right? Of yes, that happened in the past, but we're doing better. Right. right. We have improved that. And, you know, I, I said this, that's great. Right. And yeah, you are doing better, but I've been cheated on by my girlfriend, right? She hasn't cheated me on, on me in the last three months. That's great. Things are starting to feel better, but she's asking to go out with her friends tonight and leave me home. I'm still a little worried where she's really going, <laughs> right? That's uh, sorry, right? You haven't, you're not quite there yet. And they're like, well, what else can we do? Nothing. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just, Continue just keep to doing a good job. Reliable software, and we'll yep. get there. We'll come around. Right? But that's it. That's the only thing that you can do. Now, the people who are raising their hands, who's still using 2017, get the – just go. What are you doing here? Right. right. What did you buy a ticket for this for if you're right. still get out in 7.3 or 2015, 2016? Yeah. I, and – SDS has to, and Microsoft did it. SDS has to be like, you know what? I'm sorry. We're not supporting you people anymore. Right. Right. Uh, we got to right. move on. We have to. And everybody's got to get the boot off Windows XP at some point, man. Yep. 2017 was great. 2018 was fine. It, it, it was. It 2019 was, was an unmitigated disaster. Right. 2019 was terrible. But 2020 came right back yeah so they pulled 2019 because they knew that it was a complete failure and it was their one and only shot you need to get it right and you need to get it right right now right. and they but fixed it and 2020 still, is great they're still kind of pretending like 2019 didn't happen and that wasn't just too well because they'd like to forget it Right. You know, when you, when you make a terrible mistake, you'd like to say, I'm sorry and move on and not think about it ever again as, as quickly as possible. And I get that. Yeah. But the rest of us remember, and that's why there's that struggle because, okay, so I've been burned by the stove. I won't touch the stove because I think the stove is hot. I'm going to need to see somebody and I'm going to, I'm going to watch me go, this idiot, watch this. He's going to go burn himself. And then they start touching it. And nothing happens to them. And I go, really? Have things changed? Right. And I keep watching people touching it that don't know any better. And yep. It's like, oh, oh, I guess it's fixed. I guess it's not going to burn me anymore. Yeah, maybe this is, maybe I can give But I got to watch other people do that a few times first, right. honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you've been burned by that and then somebody comes along, touches it and doesn't get burned and you immediately go, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make it. Uh, sorry. It's, it's, this world is not meant for people like you. Turns out he was wearing an of glove. I didn't see it. Right. <laughs> or he's impervious to heat. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever happened. But that was, 
I guess personally a little bit frustrating, right? Because I was the guy who was like, eh, wasn't good like like two weeks ago. That's always so, you though. That that's always you. Is you know you you look around and you're like, well, nobody's talking. All right, right. I'll raise my hand. And I've seen this happen with you, especially on more than one occasion, where yeah. you're the only one that stands up and talks. And then I see this. I see everyone. They uncross their arms. They lean forward. Like you can tell that body language. And they start nodding. They're all agreeing, but they're still not saying anything. Yeah. And. It, and I don't think this happened with this, but it, I've seen this in the past where that person then pushes back against you and they just go off and try to shut you down. Yep. And the moment that that happens, you see everyone lean back, the arms cross, and they're just, I'm just going to wait this out then. Because, yep, like I thought, I'm just going to get yelled at. I don't really care. It's your problem. Just let it fall apart. I don't care. Right. And that didn't happen this time. Like, you actually got a real discussion and then after a little while, yes, other people started to open up and speak. And yeah. it was, it was again, you know, they've been burned before, but now they see that, Hey, it's okay for Nick to talk. Let me, let me get my, let me get my thoughts out there too. And it was great. We had an actual conversation. It was perfectly respectable and professional conversation. I think it helped everyone, honestly. Right. And one of the problems that like I have is people mistake me speaking for people as speaking as them. Right. Right. Uh, I'm not necessarily hesitant. Right. I'm, I'm, I know how they feel. Right. I've tricked my brain to getting beyond it. I've, I've thought it through right in my mind critically and I've, I've moved on from it, but I, I still know how they feel, but they're, they don't want to say anything, right? They feel like they don't have that right. I am completely self-absorbed, so I believe I do have that right. So I must stand up and say it. The detailers in particular are a shy bunch, unless they're alcohol fueled. Like the day before the conference starts, you'll yeah. get all the conversation. But that was one, and uh, you know, I would encourage them in the future to find a more, a location that's more walkable, right? Like a lot of the people there have rental sure. cars or no, you know, no car at all. They're, they're at this hotel for the conference. Right. One of the they best parts about the conference is, you know, and I don't want to say nice things about Lincoln, Nebraska, but you would, you could get, grab a group of 20 people and I'll walk down to a restaurant, get a big table and then sit there. And we didn't, that was an experience that was missing from this conference. And I think it was worse for it. It was replaced a little bit by the Tiki bar, but sharing a meal has a certain je ne sais quoi to it. That so in the future, going forward, one of the recommendations I'm going to make to you is that when, if, and when we rent a vehicle, we get, yes, a, yes yeah. we get a freaking minivan or, a, you know, a van of some sort, or we rent a bus of some sort, whatever it is. But <laughs> You drop the extra 40 bucks a day or whatever it was, and we got a Mustang. That was and then in hindsight a mistake. Yes. Shuttling people in a Mustang where you have to fold the seats forward and get them out of the way so people can cl climbing into that back seat. I don't know how people that were taller than me got into that back seat because my head was hitting the hatchback. Yeah. Yeah. So, was, I mean, somebody had their, their, they were turtling their heads down because they were crammed in there, but you made multiple trips back and forth just important. to bring our people to dinner, you know, not our people, but you know, the people that were going to join us for dinner, we went with, what did we have six people, something like that. Join us yeah. at that restaurant. Yep. Three trips. So you're going back and forth to drive everyone around. And, you know, I think you took me the first trip so that I could go in and we could get a table and then you're shuttling more people to keep bringing. So yeah, that, that was definitely that, that'll be something to keep an eye yeah, on. I, okay, I think it's a the downtown Let's environment the... where there's there are restaurants nearby. And at right. least hypothetically, there were restaurants nearby. But the whole strip, this whole area was just torn up in construction. Right. It was, it was all under construction and it was off season for them. So yeah. some of the restaurants and, were just uh, to top it all off, there was a freaking red tide. Right. Yeah. So we're in the right, we're in the middle of COVID. There's and red tide makes people cough. Yes. 
<laughs> so there's, you know, a hundred some odd of us all trying to hold our cops in. So everybody else to give us the, the queer eye. Right. After it. Oh yeah. That was, that was interesting. Yep. <coughs> I promise I, I, I'm okay. <laughs> yep. So pretty sure uh, I don't have what, a fever. What about the sessions? Like what, what worked for you? It's been a couple of months now. Uh, Here's one of my problems well, with the sessions. Yep. Right. There needs to be like a little green, uh, you know, like on, when you buy spicy food or hot sauce, there's like a, a little meter on it that tells you how hot you can expect this to be. Sure. They need to do that Experience for level. sessions, right? They need to have a session for power users and a session for anybody at every time block. Right, because there were a lot of times when there was no session that I could go to that would be useful, would provide useful information for me, or even a hope of useful information. I think my favorite session that was done by a user, and I, I it was mine. I Thank you. I, no, because <laughs> I've already lived yours. Um, what was that? Was his name Ryan? Yeah. I forget. Um, it was on training people. Oh, yeah. Ryan Wonder, Wonderly. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. From okay. American Steel Detailers. Yeah. Correct. Yes. That, I, I got a lot out of that. I honestly didn't think I was going to get a whole lot, but I was like, hey, you know what? We're always looking to train and maybe we'll, we'll pick something up. And it's I funny. A lot of good both, information. We both picked up a lot. We've implemented none of it. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Yeah. <laughs> we should it's been a that. rough couple of months. Not in a bad way, but in a super busy way, and well, that's it, that's that's and detailed, that's part of the problem. Right? Is you know, it's and he actually touched on that. He's like, if you don't, if you don't do it, if you don't do it yeah. regularly, if you don't make it systemic, if you don't do it every freaking week or every day, depending on how you want to set it up, it's not going to happen. You're never going to find that time. If you don't make that time. Yeah. Well, it's and it reminds me of. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from a detailer when I talked with Bruce Vaughn, the first time I met him, I said, how do you find the time to make all of these parametrics? And he said, I don't have the time not to make these parametrics. Yep. yep. And that's, that was really the gist of the whole conversation on training too, is you, you don't have the time not to train people. You've got to be training them. You've got to constantly be developing. Everybody always has something to learn. I mean, we've got guys working for us with 15, 20 years experience and I've sat down and shown them things that I've known for years, but yeah. it didn't occur to me that they wouldn't know. And I showed it to them and they're like, that's witchcraft. That's amazing. How did you do that? that yes, we've got to do that, which I think we'll be doing a video on that shortly. Right. That's the whole, get edited that's together. One of the main points of the channel, right, is to get that stuff out there where we're like, oh, I thought everybody knew about this. I guess not. Right. Here's, here's the tip. But one of, the, one of the things we suffer from, right, is it, we share all of our information, but we get very little back. Right. Like a lot, of, we'll get, you know, 600 views on a video and no comment about, oh, you missed this little step that can make it even easier. Or, hey, did you know right. about this little thing? So I'm, I'm hoping that maybe the Discord will, will pick some of that up. Right. Um, which, if you didn't watch our other video, that the Discord channel is up and running. Uh, so, you know, I'll put the information down here in the, in the, the comments, but please join the Discord, chat with us. Right. As other detail, we just want to talk to other detailers or, or be able to say, "Hey, I, I need a standard detail for a freaking J bolt. Does anybody have one?" Yeah, here it is. That's I, I really like to hear from from those people. But the the open table or the what what do they call it? Round table. Round tables. Yeah. Round table discussions. Yep. You could do four of those in the conference and every one would probably be one of the most valuable things that you did every time you just shuffle people up and say, here it is. But one of the things SDS2 does wrong is they, they lead the discussion, right? At the AISC conference, it's here's a, a vague area of discussion. You guys chat. And we'll just every once in a while ask questions. We'll take notes and eavesdrop. 
Yeah. Right. Exactly. And I, that's kind of how and I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like I take over, but I kind of do. So when I sit down at one of those discussions, I don't get up and move and go topic by topic. Right. I just strong arm whoever's there. So if I sit down at modeling, we'll, we'll talk modeling and other people there will talk modeling. And then once the conversation kind of starts to peter out on modeling, I'll just start bringing up any other information I want to talk about. doesn't matter if it's drawing editor, report writer, parametrics, whatever it is, I'll talk. Those people don't get up and leave and go somewhere else. They all just sit. This is our guy. And we're going to tell you now what we want you to know about how we're using the software, what we'd like to see and whatnot. And off topic, doesn't matter. He's just taking fear. We, we hijack Nate. Um, I'm forgetting his last name now. Block, I think. Uh, or Tim. God, I'm forgetting now. I'm all over the place because it's been too long. I think yeah. it was Nate, though. I, I want to say why Nate. we wait so long to shoot the videos is so that we're excused when we forget everybody's names. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, we, we just hijacked him. I forget what, what the topic was that we even sat down for, but we just ate up the whole time talking to him about all the other stuff that we were thinking about with the software and he took notes on all of it. It wasn't like, he'd like, well, you know, this isn't what I'm supposed to be here for. He just covered all of it. Right. But it, this has been a consistent, I think, issue with communication with SDS two is, and I heard this phrase, I think on Mad Men, it's a good one. It's playing tennis with the curtains, right? You hit stuff at it and it never comes back to you. Right. So SDS2 may well be taking all of that input in and doing things with it. Right. But there is no feedback to say, I've heard you. I understood you. And here are the steps we took to do better. Right. Or to implement what you've said so that the next time, when you submit a bug, when you submit a feature request, if that stuff actually happens, if that stuff is good, right, then you get to feel like you contributed to the community. And then sure. you'll do it again, which is something even we are not good at, right? Because we've right. never gotten feedback. Every Like if you submit a bug request or a bug to STS2, they'll take it in and acknowledge receipt but you will never hear if anything happened with that buck. Right. And that's that right. good. And in talking, in talking with Adi, it sounds like they have a list of stuff that could be tens of thousands of lines long. Yeah. And then they have to try to organize that as far as, okay, this 50 items that we've received, they're pretty similar. Let's try to boil that down to something. And I think just in trying to track that, they're not so concerned with getting back to you, but they are concerned with trying to implement. So, yeah, because it used to be all the PR stuff, but then you'd get the release notes and you're hunting for, okay, I had a PR, PR yeah. 10,045. Uh, I don't see it anywhere. I guess they didn't get to it this time or whatever, but maybe they did. It's just they handled it under somebody else's request because there were 50 duplicate right. requests that were close enough. And this is what we titled it because they did put PRs next to things as they, as they added features or, or bug fixes. Right. But yeah, it, it, they've, they've gotten away from that entirely. And without, like you said, without any real acknowledgement that they have done the thing you've asked for, unless you happen across it, you may not know. Sometimes these features get added and there isn't really that unifying source. Like you can look at the patch notes and then you can look at the how to, and then you can check out their YouTube videos and, and they've got their connector, uh, that, that yeah, newsletter it's all, that they, it's all out. disjointed <clears throat> and we don't really know. And Steph kept hammering on this, right? Oh, well, do you read the, the marketing emails? And the whole room is like, no, right? Because eight out of 10 of the marketing emails that we get just from SDS2, I, there's nothing in there for me, right? So I, I'm, I don't have time to read all of these all the way through, right? right? 
Well, it's like modern steel construction. I don't know if you still receive those, but unfortunately for me, I do. And I look at them for half a second and they go in the recycle bin because 99 times out of 100 these days, it's all talking about engineering. It's discussion of load paths. It's discussion of a case study of a building that is up. There's nothing in it for detailers anymore. So I don't care. Occasionally, I may read something like they used to have a, a good that uh, was that Steelwise. Yeah, they had the, they have a quiz, and, the and then they quiz, would also yeah. have the the Q and A thing where engineers right. you and whatnot would answer you. In every single episode, every single issue, there was you knew there were these two things that you could right. pull out of there, and that would be my advice to SDS on those emails. Make sure that at the top every one of those emails there exactly. is something that will be interesting to sds to detailers it's not a case study it's not you're trying to sell stuff it's not you've broken into new global markets it's not marketing bullshit it's right here's a feature you probably didn't know about or here's something that we fixed that now works better that you can make money on then right I will start consistently. I might stick around and read the rest. Those emails. But you also right. need to make a solid break between old way and new way because I don't read them. Right? I'm right. not going to start reading them. Yeah, there just has to and there has to be a single source. How to YouTube videos, uh, you know, having a marketing email, all of those things, it's too many things. But when she brought up um on 20 in 2021, the splash screen has a section now that changes it updates yeah she's like well did you look at that no i had no idea that was a thing because i'm here to work so i open the splash screen and all that is is my segue yeah i tune out it's my segue into the modeling or the drawing editor or if i'm unlucky enough that i have to go looking for something else like you know utility function to run verify and fix or whatever then i gotta go for that but i know what i need and that's all I'm looking at. This other superfluous stuff, I can completely ignore its existence. I had no idea that it was updating and changing. You know, when you see that, oh, what's new with SDS? I installed this months ago. I don't care. There's nothing new for me. As it turns out, that's updating. Right. That's something to look at. And I've taught myself to immediately ignore it. It's like, well, okay. So if that is, if that's the place, which I think that's the place, honestly, that's where you need to have your marketing Right. Not marketing, but have those new features, have that stuff all spelled out. Smack it needs to be visually attractive, though. I need to be able to see without reading that this thing has changed over here. Hey, what's that? Right. 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 Like have you need a picture a, of something. Of something that happening. Done. That's interesting. You have to. Right. It's just like a TikTok video. You don't get me in those first three seconds. I'm gone. Right. right. You, you have right. to be interested. It, it, just to go back to my streaming, I put up YouTube videos, a lot of YouTube videos on my yeah. on my personal, my gaming channel. And I have videos that are 20, 30 minutes long. Some of them run for a couple hours if it's a long session of, of some game that I felt was interesting the whole way. Yeah. I get two types of viewers. I get one viewer that quits after 10 seconds or yep. one viewer that watches the whole thing, no matter how long it is. They're interested, but you have 10 seconds to hook that viewer. If you can get them to stay for 10 seconds, they will stay for the whole thing. If you can't reel them in, at least within the first 30 seconds, they're gone. It has to be that instantly appealing. And sometimes it boils down to, did I have a good enough thumbnail to get a click? You know, I've had really great content in videos and my thumbnail sucks because I phoned it in that day. And I don't get a view, forget duration. Nobody even clicks on it. And then I've gone through and I went, oh, that was a shitty thumbnail. And I update it. I put something interesting. Boom. I get views and I get longer duration because it was interesting content, but I didn't make sure that people actually swipe right. right you know, they don't click but on it. There's, there's two kinds of people, particularly in software, right? There are the kinds of people who see everybody's doing it not the way you designed and they think everybody's doing it wrong. And then there's the people seeing everybody's doing it, not the way designed. I designed it wrong. Right. Right. 
Exactly. Second type good, first type bad. Right. Right. So if if when you look out into that room and you say, Hey, did any of you read the marketing emails? And everybody says no, you're the problem. Right. And also you're wasting your time making the marketing emails. Now, I mean, you just got confirmation nobody's reading it. Right. Right. So I after that conversation that we had. I still haven't read any marketing emails. Right. And I'll be honest, I will not read marketing emails. No. And the problem, even that, but. it sounds, I sound like I'm being accusatory, right? When I say you're the problem, you didn't necessarily do anything wrong, right? You followed the best work. steps that were, it didn't work. Try again. It's like when you right. tried Microsoft Teams, right? Right. Every step along the way, when we were trying Microsoft Teams, all right, that sounds, that sounds reasonable. We got to the end. And the product was crap. It didn't work for us, right? Yep. We knew it didn't work. We stopped doing it. Not working. Right. We just right? moved on. We found something else. Yep. Didn't work. Yep. And I think that's what they need to do is I, I like the idea of having it on the splash screen. You need to make sure that it is cycling something regularly, obviously, and tell people about it. Have some kind of an image. Have something that draws the eye. Get us to look at that. Get the user involved in looking at that for sure. And then throw out some little tidbit there. Give them a reason to check back. Hey, I learned right. something off this. You need two YouTube channels, not one, right? If you pack your bullshit marketing videos that are meant for people who never used SDS2. Right. And well, actually, you really need three channels, right? You pack those with the people who, this is my first time. I'm trying to learn SDS2, right? Teach me how to use it. Mm-hmm. Then there's third category, right? You've got three minutes. Wow me. <laughs> Show me a feature or a trick that I've never heard of. And on that third stream, you could put three, 400 videos and people would be, I would watch YouTube from SDS2 every freaking day, right? I would, I would subscribe to it when that alert came up and it was SDS2 and hot tip. Oh, Hammer it. Yes, I want to see it. Make me better at my job. Yep. Right? Make me more money. Right. But if it's 20 minutes of you're not talking to me, right, you're trying to sell this, I've already bought it. Stop trying to sell it to me. (laughs) Yeah. Teach me how to use it better. Yeah. There there really is. There's a few different markets there, and they're trying to to squish it all into one. And yeah, I agree. You need multiple channels. You, You Brand it all under the same thing. That's fine, of course. But you need to split that out, at least by playlist. You need to have something. But if, if you can have that set up to alert. You should have you separate know, channels. I, yeah. You need, because you need then you're going to get notifications for what you need. Right. Yeah. If, if, if I, I need, need a power user's channel. Right. If I need power user tips and three times a day I'm getting, oh, we've we've rolled in with all plan. Hey, you can get your rebar stuff here. I'm done. Never subscribe. I'm out. I'm never clicking on you again. Right. I'll I'll never even, I'll I'll ignore those. I'll learn to ignore them. And then eventually I'll turn them off entirely. But if you have that split out by the demographic, you're trying to hit up because you could subscribe to all three. If you want all three, if if you use the three that you've, you've, you know, suggested, but being able to split that out, that's going to allow you to dial in and say, these are focused on these types of users or potential users. And that's how I want this to be kind of split out and dictated to so that they're getting what it is that they need and they're not getting the things that they don't. Right. Make it, make them feel like everything or at least the vast majority of you, what you see in that spot is going to be valuable to us. Yes. Do that. And we'll be, you could, I, I'm, I'm not even kidding. They could do a TikTok. And it would be valuable, right? It would be a great format for them. Here's a TikTok. Here, you know, I, I, if I saw an STS2 video on, and it was a freaking, here's a new parametric, I would lose my mind, right? Fantastic. Right. Yeah. Oh, crap. Hey, guys, the next morning, did you know this? Right. But, you know, you can take all of the distributed parametrics, make each one a video, that, what is hundreds yeah. of parametrics there? I, I'm pretty sure there, there's tons of them. Each one is a three to five minute video. Hey, I'm going to do this real quick. And I, I mean, do 
not make the mistake of being slow and boring about it. Tear through it. Yeah. Watch what I can do. Blah, 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 blah. And here's your bent rolled plate, you know, whatever the hell it is. Any nightmare mangled piece of steel you want to show me, show me how that parametric works in three minutes or less. Yeah. If I want to slow it down, pause, rewind, whatever, I can do that. But just get through it. No yeah. extra fluff. And you're going to clean up on views and you're going to clean up on subscriptions. I mean, you and, will and, drive. That's, and, and that's not that what they need. They need to make us better. The more right. money I have because I'm a better SDS2 detailer, that means I'm hiring more detailers. That means I'm buying more stations of SDS2. Exactly. Right. Right. And that's, that, that's got to be a huge segment of their sales, right, is existing customers buying additional licenses right right and it's 10 times cheaper to keep an existing customer right i learned that from the office right? yep. it's 10 times cheaper to keep an existing customer than it is to land a new one right do it go do it man yep. we already know what the product is all about you don't have to go out and cold call us we come yep. to you hey it's time to hire we've been doing great I need two more seats. Right. When we do, more when seats, we do our tutorial videos, right. And we're not getting paid to produce them either. There is no intro, right. I don't talk about what I'm about to show you, right. For three minutes, because we're not, we're not monetized. We're not trying to maximize any of that stuff. It's immediately, Matt, show me how to use the bent rod parametric. And then right. you show me. And then the video is over. Yep. Right. If they have a channel like that, I will watch it. I'll watch it all right. the time. Well, and most of the time when we make a video like that, it's because it's come up in the office. Yeah. So one of the guys has a question on how to do something or they do something and I go, why did you do it like that? There's a parametric for that. Hang on one second. Fire up the cameras. Here's how you do it. And it's really just a training tool for them. It's just, we make it public. Right. But if you take, if you take a person like Steph or Ryan or, uh, uh, oh God, for Tozy guy, James, right? Tosi. Oh, James Schwartz. Yep. Yeah. And you put them with us, right? And you just let us have a conversation with them, right? About what's going on at SDS2. Interesting content, right? But if you have him talk to somebody else at SDS2 and they're trying to sell SDS2, the bullshit meter immediately shoots through the roof. That's why that fucking steel and, I don't know what it was, steel and whiskey? Steel and whiskey, right? You, you're three minutes into it. You're like, this is, the, they're just trying to look casual and sell me SDS2, right? Like, I, I don't, I've already got it. Stop trying to sell it to me. Yeah, I, I didn't make it through any of them. I watched for a minute or two and it's like, yeah, I'm good. Right. So I don't, I don't even know what's in, in those because like I said, you've got to hook me in the first 10 seconds or I'm out. Well, and I don't think with that format, I don't think you could do it in a corporate infrastructure because they have to be cool. Right. Right. They have to have that sales mask on that, that sales. <laughs> right. Sm- right. Yeah. And everything you say is gold and you know, <clears throat> SDS2 is is always perfect. I understand right. it's, why it's they like can't. trying to script a Joe Rogan episode, basically. Right. Like, it yeah, would be like us be. recording this episode with one of our customers sitting right there. Right? Right. Where the whole time we're just trying to be like, oh, we're perfect. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. We're, we never make yep. mistakes. Never make mistakes. Nothing's ever mm. wrong. Mm-mm. I love no. that you have 80 pages of standards. Yeah, we love your standards. Give it to us. <laughs> Give it to us. That back charge, totally valid. That was my mistake. My mistake. <laughs> yeah, it just not going to work for him. So. Yeah, when, when you see someone like that, especially on YouTube, you can tell immediately what's what's going on. It, it, just, it just doesn't come off right. Yeah. But yeah, have the actual, just a casual conversation. It It's so much better. Got to be honest. People feel the difference. That's that's why people like Joe Rogan. I mean, he's an idiot. <laughs> but he know, he knows he's an idiot. He admits he's an idiot. But he's, he's honest about it. Question. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yep. It works. 
it works. Uh, and hell, a lot of our conversations, you come in with a game plan. You've got something you want to talk about. Yep. I got to sit here and ask questions because I don't know what you wanted to talk about. Or the other way around. I've got right. something to if show script, you that you've never If we scripted that. this, it would be terrible. We've scripted one video. Yep. And I will never do that again. <laughs> that was the worst video. I still wish you'd take that down. Yes, I can't I won't. stand I won't. that video. It is up on the chat. If you go back to one of our first tutorials. It was... it's, it's our first video. I what think. was it on? I think it was just setting up a job. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And you had like this, like you were reading. I had a, a script. And yep. And I, I read it and I had, I, I read it and it was a nightmare just to produce. Like you and I can right. just sit here and have a conversation and you can trim out some uhs and ums and when the dogs bark and it's fine. Yep. This thing I had to get hyped up and then I would read the sentence and then I would fuck up the last word and go, shit. And I got to do it again. All right, let's wind up. And then I would try. And eventually it's just, and now you're going to have to do like, uh, uh, I lose my soul after a while because I'm not a damn actor. So when you script it, it just, it, it just goes to shit. Unless you've got a professional paid actor to do it. Yeah. It's not going to come out right. Regular well, people cannot read from a script and be okay. Yeah. And you know, I, I do, I, I train politicians on public speaking in I you know, side hobby. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I tell them, don't, don't have a speech, right? You should absolutely write yourself a speech and you should read it 30 times. But then when it's time away. to go and give it, those are just notes in your head. You know yep. what to say, you know what comes next, but you're just talking. And yep. that, that works. But reading it, nope, you're gonna, it's mm. going to look terrible. It, it's yep. going to look terrible. So It's rough. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of the Steel Forum. We will see you back here next time, uh, hopefully soon. I'm looking for another co-host. If you want to co-host on the Steel Forum, come join me. Matt is unreliable at best. It's all his fault that we're not on here more often. So hit me up if you, uh, if you, if you have a lack of control and can't stop talking about steel detailing and uh, maybe even STS2. Hit me up. Join me. We'll talk. If it's crap, we'll throw it out and we'll just shoot the shit for a while. We'll see you back here. Let's do it.